Groundhog Weather School. Written by Joan Hollum and illustrated by Kristen Sora. Happy Groundhog Day, everyone. I did not see my shadow. That means spring is here. Yahoo! Spring is here. Sun and fun, here I come. <sighs> I guess it's really hard to predict the weather. Dear Weather Groundhog, you were wrong. Spring is not here yet. Maybe you are too far away to predict the weather everywhere. Could you get more groundhogs to help you next year? Signed, Rabbit. Hmm, Rabbit's right. I do need some help. But how will I find enough other groundhogs to help me predict the weather all over North America? Have you got what it takes to be a weather forecaster? Take this quiz and check all that apply. Are you a mammal? If you are warm-blooded, have a backbone, and drink milk as a baby, you probably are. Are you furry? You be the judge. Do you live in a burrow? If you live in a hole or a tunnel dug in the ground, check this box. Are you a rodent? If you have two front teeth that never stop growing, you probably are. Are you an herbivore? If you only eat plants, you are. Do you hibernate? If you sleep for months at a time each winter, you're a hibernator, all right. If you checked all six boxes, you're invited to attend Groundhog Weather School. The news travels fast. Check. No, 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 no. Check, check. Uh-uh. 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 Check, check, check. Nope, nope, nope. No fair. I bet a skunk could forecast the weather, too. Check, 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 check. Rats, rats. Check, 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 check. Hibernate? Darn. Check, 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 check. Yay! I'm heading for Groundhog Weather School. Welcome to your first day at Groundhog Weather School class. Let's begin by saying the pledge. Pledge of Hog Allegiance. We, the students of Groundhog Weather School, pledge to come out of our burrows on February 2nd to look for our shadows and to remember that if we don't see our shadows, it means spring is here. If we do see our shadows, it means there'll be six more weeks of winter. I see my shadow when it's sunny. But why would sunny weather mean more cold winter weather is coming? I don't get it. It says here that a sunny winter day may be extra cold because there's no cloud blanket to trap the sun's warmth near the ground. Shadows? Nobody said anything about shadows. Dark, creepy shadows. Cool hair, dude. But are you sure you're a groundhog? Um, I'm a foreign exchange student. Groundhog minus shadow equals spring. Groundhog plus shadow equals winter. Will that be on the test? Class, please tell us about yourselves. We're the only animals with a holiday named after us. Aren't you forgetting Turkey Day? We watch out for these predators. My eyes, ears, and nose are good danger detectors. If a predator is near, I run for my burrow. I can't run fast, only about 10 miles per hour. Gee, my name is Groundhog. I'm smaller than a beaver, but bigger than a squirrel, and I weigh 10 pounds. Squirrels, chipmunks, and prairie dogs are our relatives. We're all part of a big rodent family called marmots. Most of us live in areas that get very cold in winter like the northeast or central part of the United States and in Canada. Groundhog Day began here in Pennsylvania. We dig holes and eat farm crops, so some states don't allow groundhogs, except for the graduates of Groundhog Weather School, of course. Like most groundhogs in the northeastern United States, I prefer to be called a woodchuck. In the Appalachian Mountains, groundhogs are called whistle pigs because we whistle to warn other groundhogs of danger. Well done, class. Now let's visit the library. Research reports are due on the next page.
Famous furry hognosticators. Punxsutawney Phil, Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, made his first weather prediction in 1886, met U.S. President Ronald Reagan, starred in a movie called Groundhog Day. Wharton Willie, Wharton, Ontario, Canada, a rare white albino groundhog with pink eyes, tries to predict which football team will win the Super Bowl, gets visitors from as far away as Pakistan. General Beauregard Lee of Leeborn, Georgia, lives in a small white house at the Yellow River Game Ranch, has been on the Today Show and on Animal Planet, has an honorary college degree. Jimmy the Groundhog, Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, is visited by as many as 500 people each Groundhog Day, has a weather hotline, visits Wisconsin schools. Buckeye Chuck, Marion, Ohio, the official Ohio State Groundhog, lives in a comfy straw-lined box in a park, visits a radio station on Groundhog Day to give his weather forecast. Pierre C. Chadeau, New Iberia, Louisiana, is really a nutria, a rodent with webbed feet and a long tail that lives in marshland or swamps. Has a Cajun-style house, which is moved to the Balgany Plaza Park each year for a big Groundhog Day celebration. Staten Island Chuck, Staten Island, New York, has a house with a thermometer in the roof, lives at the Staten Island Zoo. Ice statues of him are carved on February 2nd. Sir Walter Wally, Raleigh, North Carolina. In the week before Groundhog Day, kids record their weather observations. When the mayor announces Wally's weather forecast at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences, kids watch to see if Wally's prediction turns out to be right. Nature's Weather Predictors Some plants and animals can help predict the weather. A tree's leaves can predict storms. Leaves curl upward so their underside shows if there is moisture in the air and a strong wind is blowing. Achoo! Wet honeybees are too heavy to fly. They stay near their hive if rain is coming. If a pine cone's leaves fold inward, it may rain. In dry weather, they fold outward. Cows don't like wind blowing in their faces, so they stand with their backsides to the wind. Winds blowing from the west usually bring good weather. So if a cow's tail is turned toward the west, it often means good weather is coming. Moo! Moo to you too! Weathermen. Luke Howard created a system for classifying and naming different cloud shapes. It includes cumulus, cirrus, and stratus clouds. Wilson Snowflake Bentley was a farmer in Vermont who took thousands of pictures of individual snowflakes. This helped scientists understand how snowflakes form. Evangelista Torcelli invented the barometer, which measures air pressure. If air is not pressing hard against the earth, it's called a low pressure system. That often means it will rain. Can you guess what a high pressure system means? Professor Theodore Fujita was nicknamed Mr. Tornado because he helped figure out how to measure the wind speed inside a tornado. Lunchtime, everyone! Be sure you hog out! It's important to add as much fat to our bodies as we can before hibernation begins. Why do we have to hibernate in the winter? Yeah, I'm not sleepy! We hibernate for four or five months between October and March because it's cold and food is hard to find. During hibernation, we are in a deep sleep. Our heartbeats slow down, our body temperatures drop, and we only breathe about once every four minutes. We don't need to eat because we live off the fat our bodies have stored. So eat up, groundhogs! My friend Frog hibernates at the bottom of a stream where the water doesn't freeze. My friend Bat hibernates in a cave with her wings tucked close to keep her warm. How to build a burrow. Number one, dig a hole in the ground to make your front door. Two, keep digging. Chomp through any roots this will help wear down your claws and teeth so they won't grow too long. Number three, we can dig about five feet in one day. If you want a simple burrow, dig about 15 feet of tunnel. If you want a fancy one, dig up to 40 feet. Number four, make a few rooms along the way, such as a bedroom, a bathroom, and a storeroom for snacks. 
Number five, be sure you make a back door in case you need to make a quick escape. The reasons for the seasons. We have a surprise for you, Professor, a skit about seasons. In North America, a year is divided into four seasons of three months each. The seasons are winter, spring, summer, and fall. I'm winter. I begin around December 21st at the winter solstice, which is the shortest day of the year. I'm spring. I begin around March 21st at the spring equinox, when the day and night are the same length. I'm summer. I begin around June 21st at the summer solstice, which is the longest day of the year. I'm fall. I begin around September 21st at the fall equinox, when the day and night are the same length. There are two reasons why we have seasons. Number one, planet Earth orbits goes around the sun. And number two, the Earth is tilted. The equator is an imaginary line that divides Earth into two halves called hemispheres. When a hemisphere tilts toward the sun, it's warmer, as in summer. When it tilts away, it's colder, as in winter. Wonderful, I'm so proud of you. Shadow studies. On February 2nd, we will look for our shadows. Can anyone tell me what a shadow is? A dark, scary monster that chases me? I know, it's the shade that's made when something blocks out the light, right? If there's a solar eclipse on Groundhog Day, will we get a do-over? Move far from the light to make a small shadow. Come close to the light to make a big shadow. At night, there are no shadows because there's no sunlight. Who's holding the flashlight? Excellent. I think you're all ready for the final exam. The big test. Do you think you will graduate from Groundhog Weather School? Let's take the test to find out. Number one. What day do you come out of your burrow? A. On your birthday. B on February 2nd, or C, on February 32nd? They come out of their burrow on B, February 2nd. Number two, what do you look for when you come out? A, a valentine, B, a shadow, or C, a pot of gold? Of course they're looking for their shadow, B. Number three, if you see it, See answer to number two. What does it mean? A, spring is here. B, summer vacation is here. Or C, six more weeks of winter. If they see their shadow, the answer is C, six more weeks of winter. Number four, if you don't see it, what does it mean? A, you are invisible. B, spring is here. Or C, six more years of school? The answer is B, spring is here. Last question, number five. Whether you see it or not, what's the next thing you do? A, go back to sleep. B, have a snack. Or C, report the results to Groundhog Headquarters. Of course, we must report our results. C is the correct answer. Did you pass Groundhog Weather School? Graduation day. Yay, I passed. Me too. I'm going to New York to check the weather. I got Florida. What a cinch. It'll be spring for sure. Yahoo, I'll be doing Texas. Get to your posts, graduates, and start hibernating. Remember to set your alarm clocks for February 2nd. I'll be awaiting your shadow reports. In Texas, New York, and Florida, all the groundhogs are asleep. Meanwhile, in California, yum. For me, I shouldn't have. It's almost time. February 2nd, at last! It's February 2nd. At school headquarters, weather reports are coming in from every groundhog weather school graduate. Will there be more winter, or is it time for spring? 
Hello? What Groundhog Weather School here. What's your report? Does seeing a shadow in lightning count? Sh -sh 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 shadow? Achoo! No shadow. I see a dog. Does that count? Yep. That's a skunk shadow you're seeing, folks. Zzz. My shadow is divine. I wish you could see it. I see fog, but no shadow. How can I see my shadow without my glasses? The results are in. I'll rush them over to the professor. Happy Groundhog Day, everyone. I had some help this year from the graduates of Groundhog Weather School. Most of us saw our shadows, including me, so it's a sure bet that winter will last six more weeks. Professor Groundhog took my advice and got some help. He's sure to be right this time. I'm going sledding. <sighs> I guess it's really, really hard to predict the weather. How did Groundhog Day get started? Long ago, farmers in Europe watched for badgers and bears to wake up from hibernation, hoping this indicated that winter had ended. If spring was coming, it would be safe to plant crops without worrying they might freeze. When these farmers settled in Pennsylvania in the 1700s, there were lots of groundhogs around, so the farmers began watching them wake up instead. But why choose February 2nd? Ancient Romans and other past civilizations could hardly wait for warm spring weather to arrive. February 2nd comes about halfway between the shortest day of the year, December 21st, and the beginning of spring, March 21st. So it was a good day to celebrate the coming season. In North America, these February 2nd celebrations became Groundhog Day. But who's better at predicting the weather, a groundhog or you? Groundhog weather predictions are only right about one third of the time. But it's fun to celebrate Groundhog Day and watch for winter to eventually turn into spring. This February 2nd, do you hope spring will come right away or do you hope winter lasts longer? Which do you think will happen? Write down your prediction and see if it comes true.